Hello, hi, welcome <laughs> to another Paint With Me video. My name is Melissa and today we are going to be painting with gouache and then finishing up our painting with some Prismacolor Premier Color pencils and Caran d'Ache Neocolor 2 water soluble wax pastels. <laughs> um, let's paint. Uh, this is a painting of my Aunt Anne's lovely garden. I used two different photos to put this sketch together because um, I like the foreground in one and I liked the background in another so I made it up. <laughs> um, but I think it works. I think it works. Um, so recently I've been doing my landscape paintings using acrylic ink and I wanted to and before that I was using gouache <laughs> so I'm new to acrylic ink and I've really been loving it I've been loving the saturated um, colors that the acrylic ink provides and I had been using um, dried gouache on my palette so you'll see or dinner plates <laughs> so you'll see that my plates were nice and clean with the exception of some like a good quantity of dried so dried gouache so I squeezed out some fresh paint and surprise it's nice and saturated <laughs> um, yeah not a surprise but anyway uh, a good reminder for myself that it's okay to use fresh paint. I said that in my last video when I, when I was talking about maybe trying this with gouache and here I am trying it with gouache and now we know. <laughs> fresh gouache is more saturated than old watery dried gouache so um, you're welcome. <laughs> One of the problems with painting such like a green landscape can, can you guess what one of the problems of painting such a green landscape is? It's all the green. <laughs> it's, it's trying to find different ways of making green so that they're not all the same shade of green. Um, same value. Um, you get what I mean, like variation in green is actually quite a fun challenge. Um, and if you've been around here for a little bit, I'm sure you know that I like my greens to be dirty. <laughs> I love the, um, what is it, the sienna? Is it the sienna or is it umber? The brown that I have in my little palette here, um, a little bit just makes the greens that much more yummy in my opinion. <laughs> and yeah, um, that's what I do. Red also works and I, um, I definitely squeezed way too much red out on my palette, but I saved it. I'm gonna let the gouache live on my palette now. I'll like clean up the mixed parts, but like the, the hunks, <laughs> I'll leave them there and uh, just reactivate those and see how that works next time. But I did take the red because I squeezed out more red on, an, on another little plate <laughs> when I get to the pink. Um, so I moved that into my travel into my travel palette, which I'll use when I go out plein air painting, which I'm getting really excited for. Um, it's March 25th and we just hit the beginning of spring a couple of days ago and we're today enjoying quite the nice spring storm. It's like super windy, super rainy, uh, nice and cozy, but the promise of spring is here <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm excited for it. Um, last year was my first time plein air painting, um, painting outdoors, like directly from the landscape. And it was my plan last year to do one plein air painting a week. And I ended up from the beginning of May to probably mid-September making 35 plein air paintings. <laughs> so um, my plan this year is to do that many and if not more. And I want to see if I can record my process outside too. Um, that's my plan. I don't know how I'm going to do it, <laughs> but I'll figure it out. Um, and then you guys can, you guys can watch it too. Uh, if you have any tips and tricks on filming outdoors, like filming your painting process outdoors, or if you've watched any videos that are, um, that you think would be helpful, I would love, love to watch them or hear your, hear your tips and advice. Um, we do have a lot of filming equipment, so, um, 
maybe we we side we sidetrack here. So my husband and I, we run a small little marketing agency. I started as like a freelance graphic designer uh, five years ago now, and when the pandemic hit, he joined me. So we call it an agency now because there's two of us. <laughs> um, and yeah, so we do like social media content um, for small businesses. We do like websites and um, just other general marketing, things like that. He's a DJ, so it's just like cre creative creativity all over the place, um, which is great. Although not sure how creative social media is all the time, but if I think about it as like little graphic design gigs, <laughs> that helps me, helps me get through my days. Um, Anyway, we do videos, or we have we have done previously. It's not something that we're currently doing, but we are available. <laughs> uh, we do videos, so we have like all the tripods, all the filming equipment. I don't think I would take any lights out or anything. I don't even know if I want to take a tripod out because there's already so much to take out um, with the paints. And I mean, the, it's a small kit, but um, we need a blanket for the dog, we need water, we need like chairs if we're going somewhere that's not going to have like available benches or picnic tables or something. Um, so a tripod is just one other thing to carry, but I, I'm, I'm going to figure it out. <laughs> I want to make, I want to make plein air vlogs. Uh, so stay tuned for that when the weather gets nicer. I will go out the first day it is above 10 degrees <laughs> and nice. Um, so hopefully that comes soon because I'm itching for it. Um, <laughs> what else? I should really plan out my voiceovers more than I do because I don't at all, um, or I haven't been at all. I've just been kind of riffing and uh, watching myself paint and then maybe I'll say something about it. <laughs> uh, but I am coming to the end of the paint layer. so. Once I get all the paper covered with the paint, then I'll come in with um, with pencils and neocolors and just add more texture and dimension. Um, but really, maybe what I could say is when I'm looking at my reference photo, or in this case photos, it's really just looking at like the big blocks of shape and color and trying just to put those in. And then all of the other details come with the pencils and stuff um, except I'm putting in color details <laughs> here with the flowers on this bush um, yeah this is as I said this is my aunt Anne's garden so after I painted my grandma's garden in um, in the last video um, I asked her if she would send me, if my Aunt Anne would send me pictures of her garden because her garden for sure 100% rivals the gloriousness that was my grandma's garden. Um, and so she didn't disappoint. She sent me like a ton of photos of her garden and it's going to be my plan to go and visit um, her garden and do some plein air painting there live on location, <laughs> um, which will be fun. So here come the pencils. I ordered this um, pencil roll from Amazon. <laughs> and I was hesitant to get one before and because I thought it would just be big and unnecessary, but because I'm gonna be adding the pencils into my plein air painting process, I'm not gonna say that five times fast. Um, I thought it was finally time because if I'm spread out on the ground, I don't want my pencils going everywhere. And I definitely need more pencils than my little case holds because normally I would have like six or eight colors in there like my go-to palette but to get the the dimension and depth that I that I have been getting in these paintings I need more color <laughs> so um, I have a selection I think that holds 48 and so I'm working out of these 48 to make sure that I have everything that I need and then if I find there's some that I'm not using and some that I'm looking for from my other container that holds the rest of the pencils, then I'll swap them out. But I think I'm pretty good with these 48. Yeah, um, also a little bit of pink on top of green in a landscape is like perfect. <laughs> it just adds, like it's just, I don't know, I don't know what it is, but 
it uh, it makes me happy when I when I see it in like when I look back on paintings and stuff just to see like a little bit of pink. I love it. I love it. Um, using neo color too, just for like a little bit of extra creamy creaminess on top of the gouache. Yeah, these are like, it's really just about being random here and kind of intentional, but not super intentional. Um, and just loose, keep it loose. I keep it loose. <laughs> God, I really need to cut some of this stuff out. Maybe I'll just stop talking for a little bit and let you enjoy the process. <laughs> oh boy, all right, I've lost my steam. Um, I, I filmed this a little bit differently, actually. Maybe I can talk about that. So my other process videos, I had the head down, like the overhead camera, um, and you could see the full process. But it's like, it was sped up by a thousand percent, which is like really super fast. So in this video, I apologize for the shaky camera because I'm holding it in my left hand while I'm painting and drawing with my right hand, trying not to get my thumb right in the lens of the camera. <laughs> Filming just on my iPhone, by the way. Um, but you're seeing the real time process here. So like how quickly my pencil does or doesn't move across the paper and kind of my thought process or lack thereof of how and where I decide to scribble. <laughs> um, but this is all real time, which I know I enjoy watching. I just apologize for the little bits of shake that come. Let me know which one you prefer. Um, do you like the like speed paint overhead so you can see everything, but it's like moving a thousand miles a minute? Or do you like this real time um, process? Curious. I'm curious. It really does help too to hold the pencil back further and your paintbrush back further, um, just to lose a little bit of control, in which I think allows for some spontaneity um, in the mark making. I learned that from Sandy Hester. Thank you, Sandy. Because <laughs> if she's ever going to watch one of my videos. <laughs> Okay, ah, that was the first pencil break in this video, in the making of this painting. So that's pretty good. I did have one kind of crumble, but it wasn't a full break, but that was the full, the first full pencil tip break. <laughs> so yay, only one this time. That's great. Um, we are coming to the end of the painting scribble process. And then we're going to see a nice, satisfying tape peel. And then I'll do a pan, and then we'll be done. <laughs> Here we go. Here's the mess of my table. There's the pencil roll. I really, I, th I really think I'm going to like taking that outside. So let's do a tape peel. Here we go. <laughs> Real time tape peel. Something so satisfying about seeing the clean lines <laughs> revealed. Um, it really just, it's like I was just scribbling for an hour and now all of a sudden I have this painting in front of me, which, which is pretty cool. Um, I think I will give this to my, I will gift this to my aunt uh, when I go and visit her and paint in her garden. So yeah, thank you so much for what. <laughs> Um, thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it. And again, let me know which um, method of filming you prefer. Do you prefer the handheld real-time close-up? Or maybe I could use a tripod real-time and just trim it down. Um, <laughs> or the overhead sped up to a thousand. I'm curious. And yeah, thank you. I will see you in the next one. Bye.